Hello, all of you. Uh, I would like to welcome you all to today's class. Uh, we looked at in our last class uh, some aspects of uh, Peterson olefination after we had discussed the allyl and vinyl silane based chemistry. <coughs> uh, we saw very interestingly that uh, if we have beta silanol, then uh, they uh, can undergo uh, syn elimination under basic conditions. Uh, which is what is called as Peterson olefination. It is a very interesting uh, reaction as an alternative to uh, Wittig reaction and uh, we discussed the mechanism of that where we, we saw a 4 member oxygen silicon containing intermediate. And then of course as we, we saw that, uh, that say for example uh, this kind of uh, beta silanol which is having a 3O uh, con configuration uh, can lead to the formation of the E isomer under basic conditions. And under acidic conditions, uh, it can undergo anti elimination uh, to form the Z isomer, and we discuss the mechanisms in detail. Then, also, we saw one uh, cyclic um, uh, case where cyclohexanol, which is multiply substituted with various hydroxy groups and silane, silane uh, moiety, that we saw how under different conditions the conformation allows the elimination of uh, the uh, beta silanol moieties to give uh, the E or, uh, or different types of uh, regioisomers of the cyclohexene substituted molecules. Then uh, we also saw the uh, carbon ion stability and why the carbon ions which are uh, alpha to the silicon are more stable than normal carbon ions which do not have silicon moiety. And then finally, we looked at uh, the um, epoxidation of the vinyl silanes and how these epoxides uh, which are uh, sensitive towards H plus that is the proton under water conditions can give to the ketone or aldehyde and uh, uh, under uh, say HBr conditions uh, also they can give the uh, different types of uh, uh, double bonds depending on how the opening allows. Uh, if the opening of the epoxy silanes are carried out to give beta silanols and if they are pursued in the same acidic medium then of course we get anti elimination similar to what we have discussed it here. And uh, if uh, they uh, can be taken up separately after the beta silanol form then of course under basic conditions they give uh, a Z uh, sydney elimination to give this kind of uh, E isomers. Now we will move into a, the final uh, topic of our course and that is Simmons-Smith uh, reaction. And the Simmons-Smith reaction is a very interesting way of carbon-carbon uh, bond forming reaction. Uh, it is called as an organic uh, calitropic reaction uh, which is um, uh, involving uh, an organo zinc carbenoids. It is not a carbene but it is a carbenoid that reacts with an alkene uh, forming a cyclopropane. What are carb calitropic reactions? Calitropic reactions are a subclass of cycloadditions in which on one of the reagents um, both the new bonds are being formed. That means if this is the reagent and then both new bonds are being formed uh, on the same uh, atom that is the sulphur. This is how the reaction is, uh, is uh, termed or uh, uh, classified as a calitropic reaction. So if you have a, a double bond like this and suppose you have a, a formation of a uh, molecule like this where you have a, a species which allows the incorporation of a, of a single carbon. So if you have a, something like this here uh, with a carbene or carbenoid whatever you can take it then what you are doing it is that you are forming both the bonds like this here 
and that is what is called as a calytropic reaction. So, a methylene or certain other simple alkylidine groups can be delivered to the alkene simultaneously forming a cyclopropane and this is what is a, a calytropic reaction. The configuration of the double bond is uh, preserved in uh, many of these reactions and uh, that is very important from the point of view of application in uh, organic synthesis because the reaction is highly stereospecific. What we are talking about is the Simmons-Smith reaction and uh, the originally developed procedure that employs uh, the uh, reaction of diiodomethane. So, you have uh, diiodomethane is uh, uh, something like this here uh, CH2 in the presence of zinc copper couple. So, you have a zinc copper couple which allows a finally uh, divided or finally spread zinc uh, species, zinc atoms and uh, they allow the formation of uh, uh, cyclopropane in the uh, when in the reaction with uh, uh, olefins. Now, this is what it is the zinc copper couple diadomethane it is expected uh, or believed to form an intermediate of this type uh, which then uh, interacts with the double bond. So, this is not a free carbene, but it is a carbenoid type of intermediate zinc carbenoid and that uh, uh, the transition state that is proposed is like this where if this olefin reacts with the carbenoid here. So, there is a simultaneous bond formation between the carbon of this uh, zinc intermediate with the double bond of course, you will have something like this and at the same time the carbon iodine bond is breaking, the iodine and zinc bond is forming and the carbon zinc bond would also break at the same time later on to form the cyclopropane and of course, you get the zinc iodide. So, the this here this CH2 part of the uh, Simon Smith reagent gets transferred in this particular fashion. And now, this is also termed as butterfly transition state because it looks like a butterfly. It is known that ultrasonication uh, improves the um, formation of these organoid species, uh, organoid zinc species and therefore, the reaction occurs faster and that suggests that the reaction occurs at the surface of the zinc. It is believed that when diadomethane reacts with uh, zinc, it forms uh, uh, this species which can uh, of course, uh, be in equilibrium with uh, another species and zinc iodide. So, it is expected or it is believed that either this or this are these are the species which are involved in the um, final cyclopropanation. Now, pure carbenes are excluded and a metal carbenoid or organo zinc reagent is likely to be involved in the mechanism of such reactions. Because uh, what has been found that uh, this, these kinds of in, uh, reagents uh, react with uh, allyl alcohols of this type where there is a specific uh, stereo uh, chemistry of the OH group for example, alpha. Then the uh, cyclopropanation takes place from the same side uh, on the uh, of the um, OH group uh, and suggesting that there is some sort of chelation. Not only allyl alcohol, but even homonyl alcohol of this type where the hydroxy group is alpha and the geometry of the uh, cyclopropane ring also becomes alpha. That means, there is some chelation that is involved with the with the uh, species that is uh, uh, holding the zinc with it. So, that it has some Lewis acidic character. It is a very important reaction and um, a very useful method and it is generally preferred over other cyclopropanations. The only drawback about this reaction is that uh, it diadomethane is somewhat expensive, but then alternatives like dibromomethane or diazomethane and zinc iodide are, are also reported a combination of diazomethane and zinc iodide. But there are also have been other improvements uh, for example, uh, Furukawa uh, has made a modification where diethyl zinc is used along with diadomethane and it is believed that 
a species of this kind is formed along with the uh, expected um, uh, zinc carbonoid species like this and of course ethyl iodide uh, is also expelled. And it is uh, um, believed as I have mentioned earlier that these are in equilibrium with, with this so that we have the species of this kind as well as of this kind and of course we have zinc iodide. All of these help in kind of um, chelation with the hydroxy or any uh, oxygen um, or nitrogen uh, this moieties which can then guide the stereochemistry of the cyclopropanes. The uh, Furukawa modification uh, uh, is very useful uh, particularly uh, when uh, cyclopropanation is done of an enol ether and this has been utilized in the cyclopropanation of carbohydrates which are generally difficult to, to carry out. For example, if uh, we take uh, diiodomethane here, uh, di diiodomethane and of course diethyl zinc, uh, we expect uh, an intermediate of this kind to form and when the reaction is done, this particular uh, OR moiety which is uh, oriented in a beta fashion allows the cyclopropanation to take place from the beta side. This has been published in 1995, this is the reference. And of course, these are the kind of um, uh, uh, transition states that are proposed here. As you can see that oxygen of course will have a chelation with this. So uh, in this particular chelation which is beta oriented allows the cyclopropane ring also to come from the beta side. So both of them are beta oriented. And if we take uh, uh, an ester of this kind here, as you can see, if this ester group becomes beta, then both the cyclopropanes are formed. That is both double bonds are cyclopropanated from the same side as the ester because the ester oxygens uh, first chelate with the uh, zinc carbonoid species and give the uh, cyclopropanated product in such a way that the two cyclopropanes come in the beta oriented. As you can see, it is 80 percent and the other one is only 20 percent. So that means the uh, steric hindrance does not play so much an important role as it is the, the uh, chelation with the ester group that dominates. In a similar fashion, even acetates uh, have been uh, found uh, to give uh, the uh, cyclopropanation and uh, the uh, chelation as you can see is uh, through the acetate oxygen to the zinc uh, part of the zinc carbonoid. And even open chain uh, um, type of molecules also give um, if we have uh, an asymmetric center like this in which OH group is beta oriented if we orient the molecule in such a fashion as then you can see the OH group is beta, this is also beta. So this is the ratio is 1 in 30 is to 1. So this has again been published in 1995. So you can see that there is a huge uh, effect of the chelation with the zinc carbonoids uh, with the heteroatoms leading to the formation of the cyclopropanes. It is an interesting example uh, where it has been found that if the, even if the nitrogen is present that allows the, the, the cyclopropanation to take place uh, in a very interesting fashion uh, where for example if you add diethyl zinc and diiodomethane then you get the cyclopropanation as expected from the same side as this. If this is beta then this is also beta. And of course as you can see the diastereo selectivity is more than 98 percent. But it, ha it has been found that in case uh, the uh, um, re reaction uh, is uh, uh, put uh, along with uh, trifluoroacetic acid, then what is found is that the geometry of the cyclopropane is opposite to the geometry of the carbon nitrogen bond. So here it is beta, here it is alpha. And again the stereoselectivity or the diastereoselectivity is very high. How it has been rationalized and this work has been published in 2007 in ChemCom 
as you can see here that the NH block, what is NH block? NH block is nothing but um, say if you put a double bond here, then you have here N um, here NH and block is COO tertiary butyl. So this can be expected to be in this way. Uh, there is a, a kind of uh, enolization or, or uh, formation of an iminol and that oxygen then reacts with the zinc and forming this intermediate and of course then the, uh, the geometry of this allows the uh, cyclopropanation to form from the same side as beta. So if this is beta then this is beta and this is beta. But in this particular case when uh, trifluoroacetic acid is added, uh, this is the intermediate that is formed. This is what reacts but before that this particular species reacts with the with the with the this intermediate to form an intermediate of this kind here. Uh, where now the Bach group, this is the Bach group that now is made in a large um, uh, group having zinc species and trifluoroacetate species and therefore uh, blocks the top phase for the cyclopropanation. So here the steric hindrance comes into the picture and therefore the olefin attacks from the alpha side. So this is the alpha side and this is the beta side. So beta side is blocked and therefore the uh, reaction occurs uh, from the alpha side. And in this case it was also found that two equivalents of the reagents are needed. If the two equivalents are not used, the cyclopropanation does not take place. That means the first equivalent of the reagent makes the Bog group um, kind of derivatized and make bulky and then blocks the beta phase and the second equivalent of the reagent then allows the cyclopropanation to take place from the lower side. Now um, allylic alcohols also can um, very easily um, uh, be allowed to react uh, in the presence of uh, uh, isolated double bond. As you can see this is the allylic alcohol and this is the isolated double bond. If we do not have a double bond uh, that contains an allylic or, or if we do not have a substrate that contains an uh, allylic alcohol a moiety simple double bond is there then the cyclopropanation would occur in this fashion. Uh, or if we have an allylic alcohol here and then uh, simple alcohol uh, cyclopropanation would give a cyclopropane uh, suppose it is OH beta then it is beta. But in a substrate like this in which we have both allylic alcohol as well as an isolated double bond it is the chelation that allows the uh, reaction of the uh, specifically this double bond to form the cyclopropane in this way. Now it is um, uh, found that if we add chiral lig ligand like this then of course we can also do the cyclopropanation in an enantioselective fashion and the work has been published in this particular journal in 2003. So you can look at this particular um, reference to see uh, how the reaction has been carried out. But uh, the main point here is that the, the amide uh, part of the reagent interacts with the zinc along with the OH group of the allylic alcohol and they form a transition state that allows the, the chirality of this particular chiral ligand to be transferred in such a fashion that you get 95% enantiomer selectivity of the cyclopropanated product. Now we look at the uses of uh, Simon Smith's product. For example, if we, if we look at uh, the cyclopropanation of an enol ether of this type for example if you carry out Simon Smith reaction then we can get a cyclopropane like this and now if we treat with H3O plus uh, uh, to this cyclopropane which is, uh, which is called as oxycyclopropane uh, because it is having a uh, OR group. So uh, when proton is added to it then the, the uh, this particular uh, cyclopropane opens up and forms uh, an intermediate of uh, this type where positive charge in or and of course you get hydrogen here. And now this particular part of the uh, oxonium ion gets hydrolyzed with uh, water uh, where the water attacks onto this intermediate to, uh, to form 
uh, hemiacetal and OR and here there will be methyl group and then this opens up and loses the ROH to form the corresponding minus ROH and you get the corresponding methyl ketone. Now um, if we have in an enol ether the hydroxy group which is uh, having a particular uh, orientation such as alpha hydroxy then of course cyclopropanation occurs from the alpha side and in the same concept if we allow the H3O plus to, to react with it then of course as you can see that you can open up and here you get an, uh, the methyl group having the alpha orientation. So it is a very interesting uh, way of introducing uh, angular methyl group here this is basically angular methyl group angular methyl group and uh, with a proper stereochemistry which is dictated by the stereochemistry of the hydroxy group in the vicinity. So the, this has been employed in various natural product synthesis for example this valiranone, valiranone has been uh, synthesized for example this valiranone can be expected to come from this kind of enol ether. Since the uh, geometry of the methyl group is alpha therefore if this is alpha then of course we can expect the cyclopropane to form in the similar fashion as we have shown it here and then the methyl group at the junction would, would be then uh, um, the alpha because the cyclopropanation would take place from the alpha side because this is alpha. So and this can be expected to come from this uh, ketone where we can carry out the reduction of the ketone uh, and then this can come from the corresponding carbomenthone. So where the geometry of this cyclopropane cyc uh, this uh, particular isopropyl uh, group here is, is, um, is fixed. Uh, now how it has been done uh, I would like to show the synthesis of it is that you start with plus carbomenthone and uh, react it with this um, particular intermediate under basic conditions. Uh, then uh, what happens is of course uh, that uh, it undergoes an elimination of uh, this kind under basic conditions and then there is a uh, so this intermediate undergoes elimination to form uh, uh, this particular product here. So you have an elimination of uh, proton not, uh, not here. The elimination of the proton takes place here and methoxy group goes off. So base takes the OH minus takes up the proton from here. And once this is formed then of course you can write it in this way that uh, you have uh, here ketone and now what you have is O methyl. So negative charge here under basic condition will allow Michael addition to take place and, and this is what will happen that leads to the formation of this intermediate of course the stereochemistry we are not right now worried about it and then of course we get this and then you will have uh, uh, the, the ketone as it is here uh, ketone here. Now the anion again will form at this center and then of course you will get uh, cyclization that leads to the formation of eventually condensation takes place and you get the elimination and then you get the product being like this. And then the reduction of uh, uh, this uh, particular moiety here. Uh, so what is going to happen is that you are, get, you are allowing the condensation to take place here like an aldol condensation. And now the reduction of this ketone uh, gives one of the products to be uh, this where the hydroxy group is alpha oriented. Now if we do the cyclopropanation of this uh, particular uh, uh, 
the allylic alcohol then of course you get the cyclopropanation from the alpha side because this is alpha oriented. I suggest that uh, the reduction of this particular species you can try and write down the conformation of this enone and then see how the lithium aluminum hydride allows the reduction to take place to give you alpha hydroxy group. So we can discuss that when uh, the question answers will be um, discussed. Now the cyclopropanation happens then of course you, you can oxidize it in this fashion and then you carry out the wolf kishner reduction to remove this and so the, uh, the ketone goes away and now if we simply use methanol and SCL then of course this going to open and you get the methyl group in a similar fashion as we discussed earlier the opening would allow uh, to open in this fashion with the proton being here and therefore you get eventually under the acidic water condition valeranone. Now uh, granisol is a pheromone in is uh, an insect uh, sex, uh, sex attractant of the cotton ball weevil and thus the name is derived from this uh, particular grandis and this is a, a, an interesting um, molecule here as you can see and uh, it, it, uh, it actually spoils the uh, cotton uh, field and therefore there is a lot of um, uh, interest in the synthesis of this molecule. One of the synthesis that has been done is utilizing this cyclopropane based chemistry. So if we start with a molecule like this, uh, the cyclopropanation has been done uh, using a Simon Smith reaction. Now between these two olefins, the, uh, this particular olefin is electron rich therefore uh, the cyclopropanation is specifically occurs with this uh, particular double bond and once this happens uh, we treat this with HCl. So the protonation of the ketone occurs here and now what happens is this moves in here with the movement of uh, the um, double bond and opening of the cyclopropane ring in this fashion. So it gives 1, 2, 3, 4 member ring here and of course you have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, this 5 member ring is here. Now this is how the uh, this particular oxycyclopropanes have been utilized it. Now apart from the uh, angular methyl formation. Now between the two carbonyl groups this carbonyl is relatively uh, less sterically hindered because here there are two methyl groups here. So if we do the uh, formation of the thioacetal then you can get specifically this of course you will get some mixtures. And now um, this particular intermediate has been utilized it for the uh, synthesis of this grandisol which uh, I would like to show you how it has been done. So once you get this particular intermediate here here this intermediate then you can then as I discussed earlier that you can specifically prepare this uh, thioketal uh, here sterically um, uh, less hindered. Then you do the rani nickel based uh, uh, reduction of the thioketal where the uh, carbon sulfur bond breaks and you get two hydrogens here. So basically it is an equivalent of wolf Kishner reduction in a different way. Now if we react it with uh, hydroxylamine hydrochloride then you get the corresponding oxime. And this oxime can be uh, reacted with parietoin sulfonic acid and in the presence of a base which is 2,6-glutidine at 90 degrees then what happens is basically here you have nitrogen and it forms otosylate and then you have a methyl group here and then you have a hydrogen group here, hydrogen atom. Then you have a methyl here. Now what can happen is that uh, one of the um, hydrogens from here uh, under the basic conditions uh, is picked up by this uh, base uh, which is the lutidine and then takes up the proton from here forming the anion. And then what you have then there is a elimination of this type and that leads to the formation of the 
corresponding nitrile. So it forms a nitrile and of course you get the this double bond here. Once this double bond is done then you can reduce the nitrile to the corresponding CH2OH via aldehyde. We have discussed this reaction um, where the nitrile can be uh, reacted with the dibol and for lead to the formation of the aldehyde and that can uh, with the excess of dibol can give the corresponding CH2OH. So uh, this is how the reaction um, can be done or alternatively you can also react this uh, aldehyde with lithium aluminum hydride uh, instead of dibol and that can lead to the formation of the corresponding CH2OH. This is what the work that has been published uh, in 1978. So uh, these are the applications of the uh, Simmons-Smith reaction in organic synthesis. As you can see that uh, the Simmons-Smith reaction is a very important reaction. Even the uh, chiral version of this has been introduced and therefore um, it, uh, it is a very important carbon-carbon bond forming reaction. So we will uh, stop it uh, here today and uh, we will uh, see you in the next class. Uh, till then you can go to these um, cyclopropanations and various kinds of uh, silicon based chemistry that we have talked and then we will see uh, what is now uh, how, how we can solve various kinds of organic synthesis problems using various kinds of reactions that we have discussed in this course. Till then take care, bye, thank you, see you next time.